So last week we released a video that had got a lot of views and got a lot of likes and got a lot of comments. And it had something to do with creating a coupe. Here is the second installment to that very video. Make sure you guys hit that like and subscribe and comment below and tell me what you think. So I'm gonna take you back a week and show you some of the footage that I shot getting topless. Let's go. Hey, so I decided to go ahead and start setting up this plasma cutter. I finally got my little extension in the mail. Like I said, I had to go 110 for now because I don't have a 220 plug set up yet. It's the wrong style. So we're gonna actually go to the master box and set it up. I'm gonna shout out to one of my subscribers, Robert Kretz, for giving me the idea. He said, if you turn that thing down to about 10 or 15 amps, which is about what it's gonna run on 110, you'll probably be able to pop those spot welds out just you know like a gun like shooting a, like like blowing a hole out so i'm gonna try that i'm new to plasma cutting so i got a little bit of sheet metal that i can practice on and we're gonna try to get this top out let me get something straight real quick before i start getting this plasma cutter set up they say that convertibles came from the factory as coupes originally well one of the biggest problems i have with that is the fact that i know that a convertible front windshield and a pillar are all different so yeah they must have had to change that too with the whole top. I get it. Number two, this is a do-it-yourself shop, guys. I know I'm talking a lot. Listen, it's hard to do work and cut things out or, or weld stuff up or, or install a transmission while, you know, while I'm camera filming. I am definitely not perfect. This is definitely a different type of a build. Storm and Norman has done this and several other people have done this in the past. I'm not gonna be perfect at it. This is a do-it-yourself shop. I'm not a master welder. I'm not a master cutter. I'm not supposed to be. And, and I'll f it up and I'll, and, I'll, and I'll learn from it. And I'll learn something from it. And then the next one will be better. And then the next one will be better. It, but the whole point I'm trying to make real quick is, is that's how we learn to work on Fox bodies. We'll f it up. We might get it right. But I have a pretty good headstrong idea on what I'm doing. I've already had comments of people saying, oh, we got to change the doors. Well, I've already got that stuff covered, brothers. I promise you. I got the glass ready. We're going to store it. I got this door and the other door ready to go. And we're gonna start learning how to unspot weld with a plasma and a spot weld remover. So I'm excited to at least try. What's gonna happen? I think I got everything right, including my little Mandalorian mask looking thing, whatever that thing is. I got it from Amazon Prime. So we're gonna rock it and try it. Just got my ground set up. Got 60 PSI, like it says in the Lotus. I have to set up the wand, I'm pretty sure. I'm gonna set it to like 10, 10 amps and see what it looks like. I got the wand on, got it ready to go. Got the connections right. Let's power this thing up and make sure I don't blow up. Oh, sweet. Well, lights didn't go out, so I must have done something right. Let's go take it. Let's go take a crack at it. I'm gonna mess with this rusty sheet pedal, sheet metal here. Cut it, bro. We dope. I'm gonna mess around, and I know there's four here, so there's one, two, three, and four. We're gonna try to get these spot welds out by blowing the hole out of them with the plasma. Try to set you guys up and watch me. Watch me blow this shit up. That's a kidding, that's a, that's a joke. I got, I got kids, I got kids. Let's try it. I should be able to pop this out for the most part. I might need a little, I might have not stayed on it long enough. You know what I mean? But, okay. No biggie. Let's try it again. I don't see any of the welds there. Gonna pop these holes open a little bit more. Why drill them out? Oh, 
best tool in the world. Pretty dope, huh? Plasma cutter's working really good, but I gotta already change its tip. I'm kind of using it as a guide. What I notice is that my, my Sawzall and all the good blades that I have, the carbide ones, they're actually better to cut with. But I'll use plasma as a guide. Like I shouldn't have cut here, but I can cut into here so I can get underneath of this because I'm saving the back end of it. And up in here, <laughs> I use the plasma for like a guide here where I cut some what I'm trying to save is I shouldn't have cut here so I kind of fucked up because I should have just came over and then cut past here and the reason why we're cutting all that weld or wheel well out is because I'm trying to get by these brackets right here inside so when I actually get this thing on the ground I can go through the spot welds and just remove them the hatch that I go to stick this in if I use it for a hatch all I'll need to do is cut this section out of the hatch over on this side and use this bracket and weld these two brackets together. I mean, it's a big job, but it's kind of, but I'm gonna continue cutting. That's some ideas that I was talking about. I started plasma cutting here. Uh, it, do, it doesn't do a really, really super good clean cut, but I'm gonna get under here and I'm gonna sawzall all under here and unspot weld this later. Cause literally I could set this down on a hatch too. When I do the hatch, I could just undo the spot welds and then just put these two layers together. I mean, like I said, I'm gonna do it yourself shop. So I mean, What's the worst that'll happen? I it up. So the plasma thing really wasn't what really got me through and it didn't, it's not doing what I thought it was gonna do, especially around the contours of the sheet metal. That's okay because I have a handy dandy Sawzall that works just as well. Now plasma does really good with cuts like this, but again, Sawzall would just cut through that too anyways. But I used the plasma as areas where I wanted to enter with this. And if I got, you know, it's gonna be excellent for spot weld removers as you can see as we get later on down the road. I want to identify a couple spots here, like this bracket's a main bracket with the torsion bar. And there's a bracket up there that I actually cut out so I can deal with it when I get it out on the ground. You know, this happens on both sides here. So you want to cut all this stuff out because in a convertible, all that stuff is there, but you could just slot it in and, and re-weld it. And then of course your two pillars up front. I did end up going through most of the quarter I come up here and cut because this stuff isn't rotted and come through here so I could easily put this on a hatchback if I wanted to. And that's probably what we're gonna do first. Everybody knows that these came, you know, convertibles came from the factory coops and then they were cut. But can I convert a hatchback over? I guess you'll just have to find out, right? We ended up getting all the cuts in and what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna go over the cuts with you a little bit later of where I cut it at and where one of the places that I fucked up. But I'm gonna be honest with you, where I cut it at, this could go on a hatch with no problems because I put it underneath of the ground effects kit. So you, you got some room for error here because it's underneath of the ground effects kit and or the body trim, so not a big deal. I was gonna cut it up here, I'm glad I didn't. Somebody gave me that idea on Fox Body Addicts to try to save the quarter panels and I said to myself, well shit, I want them to just go through the area down there. So I cut up underneath here too as well. There's a bunch of spot welds and two panels in here. <laughs> if I spot weld this right out of the hatch that I use, then this panel should seat right where it's supposed to. You get what I'm saying? Almost like an alignment thing. I'm gonna go ahead and get this top off now and uh, wish me luck because I'm gonna try to do it myself. Stupid, but we'll figure it out. There you have it, you got a coop roof and you can see how much I cut on it. It looks really awesome. I'm, I'm gonna go over the areas that I cut and why. We took very careful measurements and did for the most part what we needed to do. But this is what it looks like to be missing a roof. And honestly guys, that can go on a hatch for sure, 100%. Ready to bring it in? Honestly guys, this thing weighs maybe a hundred pounds. I lift weights off, often, probably four or five times a week. And I'm not here to try to tell you that I can lift a whole bunch of pounds. 
But if that was condensed into like a bar, that's probably 75 pounds tops. It's not a lot. I should scale it, but the scale would be probably about, about 80. If you know anything about hatches, is probably at least 75, 80, 100 pounds itself, just the hatch on these GTs, not including the whole roof and everything. All right guys, so I hope you enjoyed the video. It shows us getting it to the top ready. Next time you see us, we're gonna probably be taking the rest of the spot welds out of this and deciding on what donor we're actually gonna put this on. We don't, we're not sure if we're gonna put it on a convertible yet. I got my eye on another convertible. It's actually a four cylinder here in Cleveland. And I also got a, my eye on a couple of my hatch rollers that I've had sitting around because I really want to do a hatch instead of a vert this time because you don't ever really see anybody doing the, the, the hatch version. If you enjoy my channel, make sure you hit that like and subscribe. Comment below, like I said. Make sure you go out there and, and, and sub and check out all those new Fox Body channels that are popping up. Those guys are super important. And I thank all of you guys for watching up until this point. But outside of that, I'll see you in the next video.